What's poppin'? I'm Peter and today is a special day because today I've turned all the lights on in my basement so I can give you guys a room tour. Now since I'm guessing that this is gonna be one of my more popular videos, I'd like to say welcome to everyone who's new here. Welcome. And I hope you enjoy this video because I don't think I'm gonna be making another room tour for like another long time at least. I have no clue how long a long time is but I'm, I'm just gonna stick with it. But I think I should stop dilly-dallying here and let's just jump into the room tour. Now I know most of you are probably here for the city here and I'm not gonna make you wait too long for that because the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start over in this corner and then we're gonna work our way around the basement and then end over here there's nothing special about this room that's just where we're gonna end okay so without any further ado let's just start this is a staircase as you can imagine it's the staircase I used to get downstairs but nobody cares so let's move on okay next to the staircase we have a bathroom as you can see this bathroom has a little bit of an overflowing garbage can so let's just not talk about it too much hi now that we have those two things out of the way, let's just get into the actual interesting stuff where I can talk a little bit longer, such as these cabinets. This binder down here actually has a lot of keepsakes from when my brother and I were little. We had kind of like a whole storyline based around our Lego town, and it could probably be another video on its own, so I'm not, I'm not gonna get into it too much. And I know I'm saying that a lot, so let's get into something. This is the cup of brick separators that we have, and it's actually two layers deep. I think you can see there's one layer and then there's still more in there. And it's in a clay minifigure head mug that I made in like seventh grade and it broke, so I super glued the back back on. I know what you're thinking. That's craftsmanship. In addition to that, we have a couple of old brick separators. Actually, more than a couple. We have like four of them. That's pretty neat. Also, this brand new brick separator that's never been used before, and I'm not going to use it, so I didn't store it with the others. I'm pretty sure all of these things in here are full, so I'll take you through each one quickly, of course. The top one here is green to show that it has base plates in it. We're a little short on base plates right now, so it's not very full, especially road plates. We don't have any of those. Underneath that, we have just some random junk. And when I say junk, I don't mean junk, of course. I just mean some miscellaneous Lego stuff. There are a couple of builds from Star Wars sets here like this. I forget what it's called. Somebody in the comments will yell at me about that, I'm sure. But that's all there is to this bin. Below this bin is something more interesting, which is windows. As you can see here, our bin of windows is kind of full. We have all of them in bags, so here's like all our clear glass pieces, AKA trans clear. And then the rest of this is just like doors and door frames and windows and uh, more doors and more windows and also some more glass panes. You get the gist. Below that drawer, however, is this. I'm not exactly sure what this is. More random parts, I suppose. The bin below that is a lot more full because it's our wheels bin. We have a lot of wheels. Voila. In here, you can find all varieties of wheels, such as wheels, wheels, wheels with more than wheels. Seriously, where did this thing come from, though? Things that are only debatably wheels, and of course, some things that are definitely not wheels. Okay, in all seriousness, though, this bin does have a lot of wheels, obviously, and also some of these axle pieces, and also some of these drill pieces, and also some of these chassis. But this is just our wheels bin, and it's overflowing, and it's hard to close. Look. Moving on from that, the very bottom bin is completely empty, so there's nothing to show. Oh, there is a little Lego City sticker on top. I guess that's very important for something. Betwixt these cabinets, we have some 48 by 48 base plates, and also a 50 by 50 base plate, which is not Lego brand, but it is Lego compatible. I've never used this before. I might come up with a use in the future. If you have any ideas, let me know. This cabinet does not have as much in it, but this box does actually have a, quite a bit in it. This is all our spare parts and extra sticker sheets, so anytime you get a new set, we put all the extra parts in here, unless it's a really small set, in which case we just put them in the parts collection somewhere else. That sounded weird. I just meant that we put them in with all our other parts. Anyway, this bin just has our dividers for our parts bins, and then also just some like Lego themed books, like the Lego Ideas book and the Lego City book. I forget exactly what else is in there. Beneath that, we have a whole lot of bags. Bags. Beneath that is an empty drawer. And then all the way at the bottom, we have two big bag, two and a little bit big bags of just non-Lego parts. Uh, I don't have these sorted, these are just big bags of non-Lego parts. Also in the corner, a downtown diner box. Okay, so I know that was pretty dense, but let's move on to this wall over here, because this wall is more interesting. Since I've been showing you a lot of the parts in those bins, I'm gonna continue that theme by taking you through all the parts that are over here, which is all of the other parts. And let's actually start on the left. So on the left, you can see that there are just some big bins over here. And when I say big, I do mean kind of big compared to the others, because these are really, really tiny. Yeah, these bins are bigger, and I do use these to store bricks. So these are like modified and technic red bricks. And then here's just all the normal red bricks that are not over in here. Because these are all our single wide bricks. For example, like our one by fours. 
And then we have them sorted by white, light gray, dark gray, black, red, yellow, tan, and blue. The only drawer in here that does not work the same as that one is not this one, it is the green one. Because this green bin has all the green bricks in it, no matter what color or size or shape they are. On top of this, we just have some boxes from old Brooklyn quarters, and then also a couple of pick-a-brick cups. And then on this, we have the rest of the trays. And by the way, these lights are very hot. They've actually burned through plastic before, and we had an incident with that. I might get into that later. Moving onward, we have a sink and some more parts. These are just our normal, frequently used parts. Like you can see, this is not actually black plates. These are all mislabeled. Like you can see, this is red bricks, when obviously it's not red bricks. That's just because I got tired of redoing all the labels. Okay, let's look at something that you can actually see, like white. So you can see these are correctly labeled. This is white slope. But the way I have this organized is plates are on bottom, and then I have slopes in the middle and then bricks on top. And these are all like the non-modified bricks. So like the black bricks are a bad example because I already showed you those. So like the dark gray modified bricks are over here while the other dark gray normal bricks are in that drawer. We also have a bin of all our small Technic pins and axles. And I highly recommend doing this if you have a lot of these because they are much easier to find when they're not sorted in with everything else Technic. These drawers are just our more colorful stuff. Like you can see there's yellow and then there's yellow and then there's more yellow, but there's also stuff like green and blue and red. I guess you're not colorblind unless you are. Ian. This bin just has some more various parts like dishes and also like fence pieces and also like all our animals like sharks. There are a lot of sharks, but yeah, this is just some miscellaneous stuff. Stuff that we have enough of that I don't want to sort it in with everything else or just really weird stuff like this. Where did these even come from? I have no clue. The rest of these bins are just like that. In fact, this one is almost empty. It just has our dump truck pieces. And then the rest of the five drawers here are just empty. There's also a clock. Above that, though, we have some cabinets with displays. So you can see here is some of my brother's Star Wars stuff. Not all of it because it didn't all fit on this shelf. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to look at this. And then also there's some Mega Constructs Halo stuff up there. I don't know if that was before or after they got called Mega Constructs or Mega Blocks, but yeah. This actually has an interesting story behind it. It's an Order of the Phoenix Hogwarts Castle, and it's the only Order of the Phoenix set they ever made. This thing is a rare set, and the way I actually got my hands on it is pretty interesting. I did make a video about that. I don't know if I'll link it in the iCard or description. You can just go look it up if you want. Above that is some more various stuff. Moving on. Next to that, we have some architecture stuff a little mock my brother made a few years ago, and then my Star Wars stuff. I'm not huge into Star Wars, I just have an X-Wing and then a couple of little sets. Also behind these, there's a big bowl and a frog. Next to that, we do have some more Star Wars stuff, and also some model planes that my brother has. Obviously, not all the Lego down here is mine because I could not afford all of this on my own. This comes from years of collecting between me and my brother, so yeah, we're not rich, we just have a dedication. Anyway this. You can see there's some more Star Wars stuff in here, along with a lot of minifigures. And all of these minifigures are sitting on minifigure plates because we found a load of them at our local Bricks and Minifigs store. Shout out to Bricks and Minifigs, the guys there are pretty great. Yeah, you can see some stuff my brother's got. I won't show it off too much. If you guys want more of this, I'm sure I could make another video showing it off. But that's that for these cabinets, so let's move down below to these drawers. So this drawer is not super duper organized, it's just got some random stuff in it, like a lot of the drawers that I'm about to show you. For example, you can see here's one of the Star Wars planets and also just a random Technic car. Oopsie, I broke this steering wheel, and then also a Nanoblocks drum kit, among other stuff, of course. Moving on, this drawer over here is not full of stuff that's mine, so I'm not gonna show it off to you, because it's my parents' stuff and it's not Lego. This is a lot of random army creations that my brother made back from when we were little. So you can see there's some military vehicles like tanks, and these are not Lego, these are sets from another company, I don't know which one. You can see there's a couple of tanks here, and then also an armored vehicle. Some random stuff, of course, because that seems to invade every drawer. And then lastly, we have a military base built on a 48 by 48 base plate. And I'm not going to claim this is good or anything, but it's nostalgic and we keep it. It used to have more in it, but we took some stuff out to make something cooler in the city. Below that, we have some more parts. These are our lesser used parts, and they're all stored in these very annoying bins. I suggest not getting these if you are trying to sort your parts. And when I say lesser used, I do mean lesser used and more specific because I don't use Technic very much. I don't use these pieces very much. I'm not sure what's in there. It's a variety. And then also power function stuff, which I do plan on using soon, but I don't know. We'll see if I get around to that. But I don't want to get into this stuff too much because I don't think it makes for very good content. And if you do want to see it, just let me know in the comments and I will consider making a video about how I sort my parts and what I would say to do when you're sorting your parts because I don't think I would sort mine by color again. All right, moving on. Underneath the sink here, we have, uh, oopsie, that's some special projects I'm not supposed to show you. There's a sneak peek. 
We'll see if those ever get done. This is some more minifigures from Star Wars. These are just the ones that my brother didn't put up on the shelves up there. And then there's also some random picture frames and a Christmas set. So nothing too interesting. Below this drawer is a lot more interesting stuff because both of these drawers down here are completely full. And this drawer does not, oh, this drawer is moving. That's nice. Typically this drawer is broken and does not like to move, but it seems to be working today, which is perfect. All right, so let me dissect what's in here for you because I know it just looks like a rainbow jumbled mess. So I set my phone up on a tripod and I'm gonna take you through what's in here. First of all, you have the Forest Police dual hull chopper thing. I don't know what this is called officially. Let's just set this up on the cabinet. Cabinet, I mean countertop. This is a mock that my brother made a couple of years ago. It's just a truck. There's some more Forest Police stuff in here because we do have a lot of Forest Police stuff. Not the headquarters, unfortunately. A very, very modified Lego Creator helicopter. And then a couple of destroyed boats. Oopsie, I broke it. Let's try this again. And then a couple of destroyed boats. The bridge of this boat came from the fireboat in like 2007, and it's attached to the Coast Guard boat frame and also some random stuff is on it. And then this boat is like, it's, it's a, what is this? You can see it's like two helicopter landing pads and I just knocked over another helicopter. We have a lot of helicopters, by the way. And then there's a Mega Bloks turret on the back. All right, whatever, the rest of it is not that important other than like the Minecraft set in the corner, yeah. I don't really think that's important, I just thought I'd mention it. And now I have to figure out how to fit everything back in here. And yet, there's still another drawer below! Down here, we have a cargo boat that is no longer a cargo boat, rest in pieces. A passenger plane that is modified, just like everything else city that we have that is old. And then also the marina, which is not modified, and it's pretty cool. A couple of other notable mentions include this, which came from a city set. This, which did not come from a city set, it's just a tiny house I made when I was slightly younger, like middle school age. And then some other old rainbow stuff that we keep for nostalgia. Also this creator motorbike, that's pretty cool. I like this. I like this a lot, actually. There's nothing too important down here, at least to you guys. There's some important stuff to me and my brother. I'm just not gonna go through all of it because I don't want this video to be like an hour long and that would be crazy. This drawer is also not Lego, so I'm not gonna take you through it. Moving on from that, there is nothing on this wall. So I'll just take you through the city. It's city time, but first, an intermission. Watch this. Look at that. Okay, I think this is gonna be the point of the video where we start to slow down a little bit because I do wanna take you guys through a thorough tour of the city and not just kind of skimming over it like I have been with everything else. That was actually the main idea of this video was to give you guys a city tour, but I figured I would go along with everything else with it. The wind turbine was annoying me, uh, so I'm just gonna turn it off. But anyway, I'm gonna take you through how everything is laid out and also my future plans for this. So starting with here, you can see that these are the modular buildings and I have them all wrapping around this corner here. And it's not exactly visible from the staircase, which is a little bit annoying because you come downstairs and you see mostly that, which is not as finished. That is one of the things I'm gonna change someday, hopefully, is to make the modular buildings more visible because this side you really, really can't see. Across from the modular buildings, you can see that there are some mini modulars from like the creator and city line. And these are all just like half buildings that I made city blocks out of. I know Jang Bricks did make a video recently about this and that's not really what inspired me to do this. I've had these here for a very long time but I'm glad to know that I'm not the only person who has thought of doing this because we just have like a couple of city blocks and ra some random stuff in the middle just to make it look a little bit more visually interesting. And I know it does kind of look like a mess. That is kind of what happens when you do this, but that's just how it is. Next to that on the corner here, I thought this was really good across from the corner garage because it just has a very tall, I don't know, kind of what, big official looking, it's a, it's a big official looking building basically. And so across from it, I put a park here and I do plan to finish this park off more because obviously it's not done, it's just some base plates. But that's gonna have to wait for the future because I don't have the parts to do that right now, nor do I have the inspiration to do it. And this, like I said in a previous City Update video, is just a snake, and it started out as some random modern art sculpture, and then John put eyes and a tongue on it, so yeah. Also in the park, we have a basketball court, and these fences are not supposed to be red right here, but they are because my brother and I took the old fences off and 
didn't put them back, so this is all I had for now. I don't know why there are people in the basketball hoops. Uh, I didn't really think about that before filming, but there, I guess they're there, so yeah, I'll stick with that. Another thing I'd like to note is that the road plates are only on this corner because we don't have many road plates at all. In fact, the rest of the city, the road is just the table and it's exposed and bare and I don't like it and that's gonna change eventually, hopefully, but that's how it is at the current time of this recording. Next to this, on the main visible street from the stairs and most of the basement, you have just some suburban houses, and I thought these looked good across from the big buildings because they really made the big buildings look bigger. And so you have the 2012 or 2011 Creator Apple Tree House here. I know that's not the best view of it. And you have the summer house, also from Creator, and then a tree house. And then you just have some empty space, and those are obviously not in their permanent places, but I needed something to fill that area. Another thing that's kind of being filler right now is this, the fire station, because there's a lot of empty space back here, and I'd love to put this on a better base, but it's not on a better base. And this is actually a house that I rebuilt from the Creator family home, and this has been around for almost as long as I can remember, and I don't even think of taking this apart, even though I really love the family home. And I might buy another family home in the future, we'll see. I might keep this in the city forever, I might not. Depending on how the city develops, I'll have to think about it. Also, there's a spaceship in the street, I'm gonna move that. Okay, around this corner here, we do have some more various stuff. This is just a rocket that's sitting here, I don't know why it's there. Uh, we have the city house, which is actually the only house city ever made, I'm pretty sure. Uh, another creator, I think that's the beachside house. Maybe it's, no, the, I was gonna say it's just the beach house, but that's the yellow one, Never mind. This is not the beach house, even though it is yellow. It's another beachside house from Creator. And then this is an island house that I built a couple years ago before I was really a T-fall. I was really just a, a K-fall back then, kid fan of Lego. And this does have an interior, although the roof does not attach properly, which is kind of disappointing. And like I said in my coffee house video, my old interiors were not amazing. Next to that, we have a restaurant. And I think my brother and I built this when we were about like seven or eight, which is kind of astounding because the kitchen is actually really nice. So of course we have our outdoor seating and the tables are just represented by these log pieces. And then we have a very small restaurant on the inside, but you can see that, well, okay, I guess there's a drawer working there, but there's actually a pretty detailed kitchen behind that with like a grease fryer and whatever it's called. But there's also a sink over here, some various tidbits. There seems to be a lot of various tidbits and random stuff around the city and our basement in general. If you hadn't guessed by now, uh, aside from the mountain house, that's not really related, if you hadn't guessed by now, this is actually our docks area. And we do have a lot more boats than this, like you saw them earlier in the drawers. But these are just the ones we have completely assembled and nice looking and they fit in the space. And there's also the city docks there. And the corner garage across from that. And the parking lot next to that. Man, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff. But now I'm going to head into the center of the tables to show you a better angle on that. So in case anyone was wondering what this is, this is our police base, our government base, and our military base for now. You can see we have like the second most recent police station as of right now. That's just one we got for Christmas a couple years ago and we're using it as the police station. Our old police station though is over here and it's really messed up. You can see it looks like something that was built by a six-year-old because it was built by six-year-olds. This building especially is messed up. Like, the interior still has all the furniture here, but like, yeah, that's, that's not the same. In the corner here, that blue building is an armory, and I'll show you the inside of that soon. And on top of that is a spaceship mock that my brother built, inspired by, like, the Galaxy Explorer from the 80s. Which, by the way, my dad had as a kid, and I really wish we still had it together, but we don't and we don't really know where the parts are to assemble it again. So I don't think it's ever gonna be back together, but it would be really cool if it was. Since the theme of this is kind of blue and gray, the ADU defense base main set, I guess, it's, it's not really like the same set anymore, but it's a modified version because my brother and I took a lot of stuff apart when we were kids. But yeah, it's sitting there and it kind of matches and it opens up on the roof in a really, really weird way. Like what the heck? And before I show you the inside of that, there's also this and these two ships. And my brother built both of these. He built most of our military slash space stuff. And this does actually have opening doors and the wings do fold, but I only have one hand on this because my other hand is holding the camera, so I can't show you guys that as well as I would like. Man, that was a very bad excuse considering I just set my phone up on a tripod so that I could show you the inside of this building. And it doesn't exactly look like a building as much when this is parked on top of it, but you can see this is kind of the logo that is built on the roof here and the 
yellow and black and blue. This is actually like the logo of our government kind of thing that my brother and I had. Like I said, that could be a whole video on its own. We didn't exactly have the most creative names. For example, Ark City is just called Legoland, and that's been the name that we've called it since we were like infants. Well, not infants, we didn't have a city back then. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, the inside of this is actually filled with all our Lego weapons. And, and when I mentioned before that the other military base over there used to have more in it, this is what I was talking about because you can see that this is actually full of lightsabers and blasters and guns and all sorts of stuff, along with a lot of Power Miners dudes, because those are, I guess, supposed to be like our, our National Guard kind of thing. There's also a cannon over here and a cannon over there. I wonder if my brother would want to make a video about this someday. Probably not. But let's continue to move around and look at the larger houses area. So my apologies for the poor lighting. I know our basement does not have the best lighting quality, but that's just what we're working with here, so I'm making the best of it. So over here in the worst lighting, you have my house, which is actually the largest suburban house I've ever built. I guess it's also the only one that I've ever built, technically speaking, because I have built other houses, but they weren't necessarily suburban houses. And I do plan to make a video on this one in the next couple of months, so stay tuned for that, I guess. Uh, next to that, we have a gas station, and next to that, we have a mock I was working on, and I'm not really going to show you too much of that one, because I haven't made a video on it yet, and it's a new mock, not an old one. So, moving on from that, I guess I should just stop covering it, because you guys have already seen it. But across the street, we have the beach house that I was talking about earlier, the yellow one right there, and that set is one of my favorite LEGO Creator houses. My voice is giving out, my apologies. Anyway, that's one of my favorite LEGO Creator houses, just because that's one of the first ones I ever got as a little kid, and I took the original one apart, but that is one I ordered a couple of Christmases ago just for nostalgia. Next to that, we have a hillside house that is also heavily modified. I'll show you that from a better angle if I can. Oh yes, here's a slightly better angle where you can see things a little bit more. You do have a light brick in here. I don't know if that's visible at all. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Anyway, this is a rebuild of the Hillside House, which is also from Creator. These Creator Houses are obviously pretty much my favorite LEGO sets to buy. Unfortunately, they don't make them like they used to, which is it's just kind of sad, but yeah, it's, it's what we deal with. So this over here is my brother's quote-unquote house, like his sig fig lives in it, I guess. And he modified it, and it's a, I call it the skyscraper now. He's kind of gone full committed to it and included another floor, because originally it was just this one and this one. And he's gone and included an entire new floor just to go and commit with the skyscraper theme, which is kind of cool. Next to that, we have the original Lego family house, which is... Not really the original Lego family house, but the original one called the family house. And that one's kind of cool too. It's also got a light brick. That one you can actually see. Wow, look. See? You can see that. And next to that we have my Forest Cottages mock, which is still one of my favorite mocks to date. Uh, rivaling this one, which is still probably my favorite. I'm going to make a video on that, I promise. But this one I have made a video about. I built it for International Mock Day with the jackhammer. Actually, I didn't build it with him. I built it for his event. And it's sitting adjacent to my wind turbine turbine, whatever. And I think those two do go quite well together. Uh, next to that, we just have like a little industrial kind of parking lot because that is where we've already covered. And this is an auto repair shop here that I tried to make a video on and didn't ever finish it because it was bad. And I don't like bad videos. I don't upload them. Yeah, so that's an old mock from when I was just becoming a T-Fall. Probably about 7th or 8th grade. I technically wasn't a teen, but I was I was acting like a T-Fall. But I guess that covers it for the city at the moment. I do plan to make this park better, maybe move the modulars, maybe just... I'm just trying to plan to make this a more polished city, because I know right now it looks kind of bad, especially on camera. I think it's more impressive in real life, especially when I'm like the one that's working on it and I know how much work goes into it. But I do, I do understand that it's not the best looking city and that it could look a lot better, but... We don't have the money to get road plates right now or sidewalks or fill in those houses or anything of the sort. So this is what it's like for now. And hopefully in the next, I don't know, however long I'm into Lego, hopefully a long time, uh, I get that filled in. But since I know that looking at the city and kind of how messy it is can make you go crazy, let's just move on to this area. And this area is not an area that I film a ton because, because there's just not that much going on over here. You can see we have a couple of Big Joe beanbag chairs here, and those are really, really deflated, so I don't use them that much. There's also a futon here, which means that it folds down into a bed, and there's also a couch when it's up. Yes, I just described a futon for you. Uh, next to that, I just replaced that light bulb, by the way, so it's kind of bright. That's our electrical panel, nothing interesting in there. This is my brother's Lego Republic gunship, and these are apparently really expensive, but my brother did not buy it for that reason. He actually bought it when it was new, 
because it was a Christmas gift or maybe it was a birthday gift, I'm not sure. This shelf is obviously empty. And then this is our instruction manuals, which I did make a video about because these were completely unsorted before and they, <laughs> they were such a mess and it was such a pain to organize them. But hopefully that video will be coming out next week. I'm gonna be out of town, so I did already film that video and it's pre-recorded, I'm sorry. So I hope you enjoy that video next week. Next to that, you can see we have a steering wheel and it's attached to some pedals and it's attached to the Xbox because this is our simulation, simulation steering wheel. Uh, it's not really like a simulation. We got this for Christmas, I think it was like two years ago, two Christmases ago, it wasn't, it was like 2018 Christmas. And it's a pretty basic setup, but it's, it's fun to use. And over here by the TV, we do have a couple of lava lamps just for decoration. I probably should have turned those on before filming. Our game consoles, we do have a Wii and an Xbox One. Maybe the next Xbox will be added to that list soon. And when I say soon, I mean when it releases, of course, I don't have access to it early. Yeah, you can see that in these drawers, we just have our Xbox and Wii accessories here. Nothing too interesting, so let's move on. Moving on from that, I think I'm gonna skip over this cabinet for a little bit, other than to mention the fact that there is a UCS Star Destroyer sitting on top of that. Very cool, thank you, brother. And also my brother's larger Star Wars ships over here. So let me go show you those. So as you can see, this UCS Star Destroyer is absolutely massive because there's the size of my hand, and I have big hands, by the way. You know what, I'm gonna go set this down on the table to show you just the absolute scale of this thing. Like, holy cow. I'm, I'm like six feet tall. This is, this is not, a, not a little thing. And my brother does have a goal to collect all of the LEGO Star Destroyers ever made. So here he has another two down here. The uh, one from like, I think it's 2007 it was. No, no, sorry, that one was 2007. Was that one also 2007? I don't know. Anyway, that one's just a normal Star Destroyer, an Imperial Star Destroyer. That one is a Venator class Republic attack cruiser from, I think the prequels, yeah, it was the prequels. And then these are some other, this one's from Star Wars Rebels. I think he showed up in one of the prequels one time, but that was it. And then this one, I forget what it's called. I'm sorry to all the Star Wars fans. Next to that, we have my tripod bag. Uh, I don't ever use my tripod. I just film on a music stand where you can see my mini tripod is. A little bit sketchy, but it's what I do, so yeah. And next to this, we have the last cabinet with displays. Not the last Lego, but the last display, where you can see I have my two creator cars here, the Volkswagen Beetle and the Mustang. And the Mustang, actually, I got a sweet deal on a light kit. I think this was a $30 light kit that I got for 15 or 10 bucks even. And it looks really good, except for the fact that there is a tail light burnt out. That's a little annoying. But other than that, it's pretty good. So yeah, no complaints. So maybe when I put that back, I'll just leave that on for the rest of this video. Because I think it definitely looks better like that. Like, seriously, how cool is that? Next to that, we have some Speed Champions cars, a new Speed Champions car. This is the box that I just put new sets that I get that I don't make videos about, which is most of my new sets. I haven't bought too many recently, which is why that one is still sitting there. And I got it like, I don't know, January or February. And then we just have some bins down here. I think this one has trains in it. Yep, Thomas the Tank Engine trains. And then this one is our unsorted Lego parts. As you can see, there's a lot of unsorted parts in there and some more unsorted parts. So there's a lot of unsorted parts in this unsorted parts bin. That, <laughs> that <laughs> I don't know why that's a Lightning McQueen bin, but uh, this one I think just has some die cast cars in here. Yeah, die cast or model cars at least. I don't know if they're all die cast. This one is just some random stuff. So we're not gonna look at that. Moving on from that, we have this room, which also you can see me in the mirror again. Hi, it's not a mirror, it's glass. I'm gonna get to that room last. So that is gonna be the last thing I do before I end the video. That's just a storage room. We don't need to worry about that, but that is gonna be later. Now I'm gonna get back to that and also the bins beneath the tables. So at first glance, this cabinet might not look very interesting, but I promise you, it is actually pretty interesting because this is my architecture studio, which I didn't use as much as I anticipated. I did get this when I was about like 11, even though it says 16 plus. I don't think anybody follows those regulations. Uh, I don't. My cousins always teased me about it at the time. But in these bins, here's like the mining stuff and also a Technic train and a Rock Raider set from somebody. I don't know exactly where this came from. We certainly weren't around when Rock Raiders were starting. Also, this Rock Raider set has a cool little laser thing. I don't know if... Oh, it does still work. Cool. I don't think I've ever replaced the batteries on this, so that's kind of amazing. By the way, our Power Miner sets are not really assembled still, so that's unfortunate. 
In this bin, we have some more boats and helicopters. Oh my goodness, I dropped it. Uh, oh, there's another plane in there too, which I just broke. So you can see that there are some more helicopters in here. This is a creator one. This is an old creator one that's based on a fire truck, but it's a rebuild of it. Uh, there's a city plane that almost just fell over. Uh, and then there's some more various stuff in here, like a basketball court. That's just paper, but it's, it's a proper Lego set that they made. So it's, it's Lego paper. So let's just put all this back in here and put these boxes back because these are not really going to be displayed ever. Probably not ever. We used to have more stuff displayed, but then uh, we got rid of some of our cabinets. So in an effort to clean up the basement, we actually got rid of some of our storage space, which is uh, a little bit counterintuitive. Moving into these drawers, we have probably, actually, no, I'm going to save that one for last because that's the most interesting. This is the least interesting stuff. You can see there's just uh, some broken sets in here. Uh, <laughs> these are from my cousins. Uh, I did make a video about that one too. It's a little, probably a little bit too long of a video, so you can check it out if you like. Here's, you can see what that is. It's just some more Lego stuff. This drawer has like a laboratory that my brother and I built. Uh, yeah, it's not the best quality. It's not something that's recent either, so that's okay. And then there's some more of our old creations. Some of these I'm not sure why we didn't take apart, but I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And they're just gonna stay in there. This one is the most interesting to drawer because look at this. This is a Lego Technic set from 1985. I think it was 1985. Let me get this out on the table for you. So here at the table, which you can also see is my studio. So these displays are not meaningless. They are there for a reason. Uh, this is a Lego Technic set from 1985. I did I did mention that already. Underneath it is just a Hot Wheels bin. Um, you know what? I just changed my mind. I'm not going to open this in this video because I think I should make a video on this set, just a video by itself where we experiment with this set because this set does have a lot of interesting quirks and features. So I think I'm just going to put this back and then we might see it in the future again. We shall see. Let's move on to over underneath the city. So underneath the table over here, we have what I like to refer to as the ultimate flex, because this is unbuilt sets that my brother took apart and they're all Star Wars sets. So these all have their instructions. These all have their parts too. Uh, you can see that there's just literally unbuilt sets in here because my brother doesn't want to display these. And the reason I call this the ultimate flex is that, you know, you could just build these and put them somewhere, but my brother chooses to not build his Lego sets sometimes. But that's enough said for those, so I'm gonna put those back now. In here we have uh, some old nostalgic stuff. Like I said, a lot of our Lego stuff is built uh, only because my brother and I have emotional attachments to it, and that's not gonna change. At least if it does change, we'll take them apart. So yeah, you can see this is mostly just rainbow stuff. It looks, you know, just like a bunch of random parts, but I swear it's not. I do actually recognize all of the stuff in here. By the way, this boat is an actual set. So yeah, that's just snuck in there somehow. But moving on from that, we have this big teal bin. So inside this bin is more themed and licensed and city stuff. So you can see there's some alien defense stuff, uh, some Arctic stuff from city. And then there's some, there's the deep sea explorer boat from only a couple years ago that's also buried in this bin. Uh, supposedly there's also a Doctor Who set. I think I see it right here. That was the first proper Lego idea set that we own, other than the Minecraft sets if you count those. But yeah, this is all kind of a mess and I'm not gonna get it out to show you everything because that is just not really worth either of our time. So the lid just goes back on it then. Over here we have a couple more bins. Uh, these are vaguely interesting, although they're not Lego brand stuff. So this is Mega Blocks. These are Halo figures, and they're all my brother's Halo figures. So I don't own any Mega Blocks sets, I don't think. Uh, my brother did collect the Halo ones for a while, obviously, and that's why we have some. They're pretty neat, but I don't know if I would spend my own money on them. And here we have some stuff I got from my grandpa. I have no clue where he got this, or even what brand it is, because the studs are completely blank. If anyone has any clue where these came from, please tell me. Like, send me a DM on Instagram at PML underscore bricks if you want. Because honestly, I have no clue where these came from. And we have more of them sitting in other drawers. This is just a little bit of it. And here you can see that we have the rest of my brother's Halo stuff. Uh, not much to say there. This is the last bin here before this video is over. Uh, there is another room I have to show you, but that's all. This is actually our Lego Mindstorm stuff. So we did have a Lego Mindstorms EV3. And this is actually it right here. We never used it that much, which is kind of unfortunate. So I guess I can make a video about trying to use it for the first time. Well, it's not really the first time, but you get what I mean. I don't know if that would make an interesting video though. So I'd have to come up with a new and unique idea if I was to make a video from that. Interesting room, just kidding. It's the last room, but it's not necessarily the most interesting. Is over there across from my studio, which is obviously where I film most of my videos. This is where most of my videos take place. And here's how it is in rela relation to the rest of the basement. 
Uh, there's just a big empty space here in case you were wondering. I haven't really filmed that because it's boring. So yeah, this is how our basement's laid out. This is just how everything is. Uh, there's the stairs, there's the bathroom, there's the big wall of cabinets I showed you earlier. There's the city, the entertainment kind of area, like the, the Xbox and stuff. Then here's my studio. And then next to that, we have this, which I think is more of a Nerf room, but it's more of a workshop to my dad. So you can see this is where our Nerf blasters are. My brother and I used to collect Nerf blasters, uh, mainly my brother, but I did have a few as well. We actually sold a lot of them on eBay. This is not all of them, but there's still quite a few here, including that one, which my brother custom painted and modified so that it, uh, it shoots a little harder. Not painful, just to be clear, not enough to do any damage, but it just, it's a little, got a little more punch. So, I mean, there's just a lot of non-related junk over here and over there. When I say junk, it's not junk. <laughs> Obviously we wouldn't keep it if it was junk, but uh, it's just not related to this video. So uh, there's some drawings over here. There's just some miscellaneous stuff. There's an archery target. I don't know why. Uh, my brother's Star Wars box. But the rest of our boxes are actually over here. Because look at this. There's all of our boxes right here. All of them. Well, not all of them. Just the ones that we've kept. You can see there's stuff like the Assembly Square, the Venator Class Republic Attack Cruiser. And there's like I have a lot of modular buildings basically, and also my Ideas Treehouse. There's a lot of boxes within this Assembly Square box because that one was a very big box. I think we're gonna start keeping all of our boxes from now on, but that's just the ones we have now. But let's go back to the table. So I know this might have turned out to be a long video. I haven't edited it yet. I wouldn't know. But if it was a long video, I applaud you for watching till the end. And if you did, that might mean that you like my content. So uh, I don't know watch some other content. I do have other videos. I also have an Instagram at PML underscore bricks. I post there occasionally. Uh, whenever I upload a new video, I, I at least post a story about it. I try not to flood people's homepages. But yeah, that's going to be about it for this video. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and see ya. So that about wraps it up for this video, so thank you for watching, I need a haircut, have a good day, and see ya. <laughs> no, that one is probably not gonna make it in. <laughs>